Hello, my name is Eric Chow and I direct the UCSF Center for Advanced Technology. In this video, I'll show you how to use magnetic purification beads, uh, commonly referred to as Ampure or Spry beads, that are commonly used in next generation sequencing library preparation. These beads are magnetic particles that are carboxy coated and contain uh, and are in a solution that contains PEG and sodium chloride. The PEG and sodium chloride cause nucleic acids to precipitate out of solution and use the beads as a nucleation point. And once they're stuck on the beads, they can be manipulated with magnets. What's nice about these spry beads is that they can be tuned so that you can get different sizes of nucleic acids binding to beads by the ratio of this PEG solution uh, that's added. So a lot of these purification are typically done in PCR tubes and small magnets like this. But for the purpose of today's video, we'll be using Eppendorf tubes because they're a little bit easier to visualize and this larger magnet. The first step is to take your sample and add some of the spry beads to the sample. When pipetting the spry beads, you want to pipette slowly because the solution is very viscous due to the high peg concentration. When you add the mixture to your sample, you can mix by pipetting up and down, or you can vortex. You just want to make sure you get a nice homogeneous suspension. And if you vortex, you'll want to give it a quick spin in a bench shop centrifuge just to collect all the fluids to the bottom of the tube. We'll want to let the beads sit and this solution to sit for about five minutes at room temperature to give the nucleic acids time to bind to the surface of the beads. So now five minutes have elapsed and we'll put the sample onto the magnetic rack. Depending on the strength of your magnet and the volume of beads that you've used, this can take anywhere from two minutes to five minutes for the beads, which now contain the nucleic acids, to move to the back of the tube um, attracted to the magnet. You'll know this is complete when your solution is clear and all the beads have been pulled out of solution. Now several minutes have elapsed and if you can see the beads are now stuck to the back of the tube and the nucleic acids that are stuck onto the beads are also been pulled out of solution. The next step is to remove the supernatant which now contains, do not contain any of your sample. When you remove the supernatant, be careful not to disturb the beads at the back of the tube. You can discard the supernatant and perform the first wash of, uh, with 80% ethanol. Some protocols may call for a different percentage of ethanol, so just consult your protocol. When you add the ethanol wash, you want to be careful not to disturb the pellet. So you're not resuspending the beads or mixing them into solution. You're simply just adding ethanol to the tube while the beads are still stuck to the back of the tube. This is used to wash out any of the residual salt and peg present around the beads. You want to let this sit for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds have elapsed, remove the first wash. and then add the second ethanol wash to the tubes. Again, making sure you don't disturb the pellets. Thirty seconds have elapsed and we'll remove the second wash. Try to remove all the residual ethanol from the bottom of the tube to aid drying. Now you want to let the beads dry for about five minutes at room temperature. This allows the excess ethanol that is still present on the beads to evaporate away. And depending on the volume of beads that you use and the size of your tube, sometimes this drying might happen faster. During this time, if you notice that the beads are starting to get dry and not glistening anymore, that's an indication that the beads are fully dry 
and it's ready to go into Illusion. So if you see them starting to turn this uh, kind of a dry, cakey brown color, you'll want to pull up off the magnet and go directly to Illusion. Five minutes have elapsed, and now we'll resuspend the beads with our Illusion buffer. Illusion buffers simply are just water or a low concentration of Tris or Tris EDTA. So they don't contain high concentrations of salts um, or PEG. And this causes DNA that's present on the beads to resuspend back into solution. And so what we'll do is make sure we resuspend the beads and get rid of any chunks and break them up. And again, you can do this by pipetting up and down or you can vortex. If you vortex, just make sure to do a quick spin afterwards to collect the liquid at the bottom of the tube. And we'll let this sit for 30 seconds to give the nucleic acids a little bit more time to come off the beads and into solution. After 30 seconds of elapse, place the tube back on the rack to pull the beads that now do not contain nucleic acids out of solution leaving the nucleic acids in your sample in the solution. So the second bead binding step to the magnet actually occurs a lot faster because our Illusion buffer doesn't contain PEG, which is very viscous. So in the initial separation, it took several minutes because of the high concentration of PEG, slowed the movement of beads towards the magnet. And you can see already our beads are stuck to the back of the tube and we're ready to pull off our Eliwit. You want to carefully remove your sample and again, not disturb the bead pellet at the back. If you notice that you've pulled up some beads, it's okay. Just go ahead and put your sample back in the tube and let the sample sit for a few seconds uh, to allow the beads to stick back to the magnet. <clears throat> so now our Eliwit with our purified sample is now in our new tube and we've completed our cleanup. Thanks for watching.